Let's do another brief history of kitten coder. Yeah. The second part is called coder because, quick story, I signed up for a, an account and I wanted kitten coder, C-O-D-E-R. It was for a programming form. First ever account and, well, that nickname was taken. So I changed this to a K. Since my first name is Christina, starting with a K, it sort of fit and just stuck. Kitten came from a long time ago when I was in the shelters. Because, first of all, my voice, if you notice, I have a hard time projecting it these days. I'm working on that, and hopefully I'm getting a little louder. At least a little bit louder. And I also used to curl up on a couch cushion when I was tired from, you know, your home was loading your stuff around. You get tired. I'd curl up on a couch cushion and fall asleep comfortably. Everyone at the shelter thought it was so cute. They said I looked like a kitten. And that's where that part came from. Okay, that aside, this isn't my brief history. Another small piece of my history that will demonstrate how much of a strange geek I was, even in elementary school. We started off moving around a lot. My mother and father were just never happy where they were. So we moved from town to town. I never made many friends because, well, you're moving within a couple of years, what's the point? la di da so I started reading a lot of books, things like that. Of course, my religious part I covered in another video. It did not take me long enough to actually learn the whole thing. And, well, I got bored. So I started reading everything. Specifically, Isaac Asimov. Favorite author in the world. His Robot City. If you're a young adult or younger, just learning how to read, it's a great series to read. It's entertaining for all ages, but they're small, very short books in the entire series. Read them. They got me so interested in computers. Specifically, artificial intelligence. Anyhow, we finally settled down. Kent Washington. Well, Kent Covington. This was before Covington was actually its own city. Back then it was part of Kent's system. And, well, I got a hold of computers and started working with computers and I would spend my time in, during recess. This was, I was in my, in elementary still. During recess, I would spend time learning how to program a computer. Did not want to go outside. Did not want to play with the toys. Did not want to do anything that kids did at the time. Of course though, we didn't. We had our own toys that we brought with us to play with during the recess, and they had those stupid balls and stuff that they would hit on the poles, and none of it interested me. Anyways, for a while, I, everything worked out just fine. I was happy, sitting there on the computer during recess, every single recess, learning how to write programs, learning programming code. And I eventually learned assembly language and everything, and then the teacher decided that I was no longer allowed to sit on the computer during recess. I had to go out and be with the other kids. I didn't like other kids. First, I made a comment to C.S. Sanders, Chris, mentioning a Children of the Corn meets Nirvana type goth. Goth because of the attitude. But the Children of the Corn was because of how I dressed. The Children of the Corn meets Nirvana. It was grungy, but it was very, but I had white hair. My hair was naturally white up until about seventh grade and then it started slowly getting darker until it's the color it is now. By all accounts, in about 10 years it'll probably be straight black on its own. I have hair that goes backwards from white to black. At least that's where it's going. Anyways, so because of the way I dress and because of my hair, I look like one of the children of the corn, 
But I had a very dark, moody personality. And so it was killing the corn meets Nirvana. Because at that age, at that time, Nirvana was really big. So anyways, there was one bully. This boy who thought he was basically the rule of the playground. I was the outcast coming in and since I had never been out to recess until then, he thought that he would start teasing me. I ignored it. Honestly, words have never hurt me. Seriously, you could say anything you want about me. It's just like, man, your point. Me? What? I'm one of those extremely easygoing people when it comes to words. Everybody finds something offensive, and to me, I never found anything offensive. I didn't want to be offended. But, so I just never did. So, one day, he decided to try to push me. Yeah, kids are like that. Well, I grabbed him, spun him around, and bit his arm really hard. I drew blood. He, well, everybody got scared of me after that. And so my whole, so my whole persona in school pretty much, well, my whole image in school pretty much derived from that, from then on, because we never moved after that. It's quite interesting. Everybody thought I was scary. They honestly thought I was scary. So whenever a bully would start to pick on somebody, I just walk up to them, just kind of stare at them, and they leave the person alone. I was the bully's bully. I didn't like bullies, and I still don't like bullies. And it was kind of like being the police officer of the playground, being the police officer of the junior high school I went to, being the police officer even of the high school I went to. And in the high school I went to, I was with a group of people who we all pretty much had the same attitude. We were all brooding, a brooding dark, not demented, but brooding dark with demented images. People thought we were crazy in some way, shape, or form. And we all loved computers. We loved computers so much, we spent all our time after school on computers. Running BBSs, going on to BBSs, writing programs, everything to do with computers. Anyhow, when I was young, I used people used to ask me why I didn't like the toys that everybody else was playing with, the dolls. Because of the simple fact, and this is what I would say to them, with toys you grow out of them, but with knowledge you can take over the world. This was a young child saying this. Yeah, I knew how to scare people, and I played it very well. <laughs> When you're the outcast, you can see everything from the outside. So you learn how to manipulate other people any way you want to. Some people use this for, well, bad things. And some of us, like me, just use it to keep people away. I also used, I also was discovered it, it was also discovered by my preachers in school, or my preachers in church, and my teachers in school, and so I suddenly became this person who was supposed to be the next great orator, next great speaker, speaker to the masses. I really didn't like it. I didn't like what I was being told to speak to people about. So I did it only to appease my mother, and that was it. And anyways, as I got older, I sort of got a little more specific. See, eventually it came out to be you can't conquer the world with dolls unless you have computers to power them. Or as I said in the comment, you can't conquer the world with dolls, but you can conquer it with computers. Or some such spin-off of that. Because I have a very strong fascination for artificial intelligence. It is a passion of mine. If I could be the one to write the ultimate artificial intelligence, if I could create Skynet, I would just to be able to create it. That's how much I love artificial intelligence. To create a thinking, living machine would be 
the ultimate win for me. And that was because of Isaac Asimov's stories. But yeah, I know this is a little more than just about the bully thing that Chris was talking about, but it's the nature of the entire phrase that I posted him. Let me pull up that image real quick so I can remember what I had posted exactly because I always forget which version of it. Yeah. You can't conquer humanity with dolls was my ultimate response. It was bully, the bully saying, you like computers? And me answering, yes. In the child, children of the corn fashion. The bully would then say, why don't you play with dolls like everyone else? And my response was always, you can't conquer the world with dolls. Or some line very similar to that. Anyways, if you don't know Chris, check out his channel. He's a fun blogger. He encouraged me to do this. So I always give him a shout out every once in a while. Link is down in the description, of course. And otherwise, have fun!